me. This session is scheduled to last about an hour. And I'd like to thank all of you for making that five pound contribution that I will be passing on to um, Macmillan Cancer. And I will be doubling the amount of money that I raise. So your five pounds will effectively have raised 10 pounds. Macmillan Cancer is a charity that's close to my family's heart and I know does uh, very good work. So this is a session which is live, um, interactive, I hope, um, but is going to follow a certain structure. And there are three things that we're going to do in this session. I'm going to spend the first 10 minutes, 15 minutes introducing myself, introducing various things, talking about some free resources, talking about mocks. So there's a little bit of a, um, a background and an overview. But the main event of this evening is I'm going to do a demonstration live on the ACCA practice platform and try and infuse that with exam technique, trying to give you confidence as to how to go about approaching these demanding questions. And then the last section of our time together is open house. There will be an opportunity for you to ask me questions um, about SBR, about online studying, about my courses, about anything you want to ask. All right. So those are the three things that we're going to be doing. And I'm going to start with the introduction. And the first introduction is, is, is to introduce myself to you. I'm ACCA qualified. I did these exams a long time before the internet, but I did these exams and I know what it's like to juggle a job um, with uh, studying uh, demanding exams. When I qualified, I was working with KPMG. Um, however, I realized that working in practice was not my vocation and I quickly fell into teaching. I worked for various companies. 80 and then we became Emil Wolf and then we became FTC and then we became Kaplan. So I was a, a director at Kaplan. I worked extensively with the with the team there in London and had a had a fantastic time um, for many years. However, all good things come to an end and I left them some eight years ago and went to work with uh, Kevin Let's deal with the questions towards the end. Yeah, let's deal with the questions towards the end. Um, so I'll deal with that in, in, in due course, but I'm just introducing myself at the moment. And uh, having left Kaplan, I went to live and work in Singapore. But when I came back four years ago, I wanted to do something different, have a bit of a portfolio approach. So I've engaged in this online uh, malarkey, for better or for worse. I, I like it and it's given me some great opportunities to work with ACCA, to work with FME online and to, you know, have fun doing things like tonight, putting something back. So I continue to work with ACCA as one of their expert tutors. And you may see me on some of their webinars and I do some of the uh, work behind the scenes as well uh, to support them. So that's a little bit about me. What I'd like to do, however, is to know a little bit about you in this crazy world uh, that we live in. So the first question that I'm curious to know the answer to is where you're at at the moment. Are you with are you signed up with an ALP? Are you are you are you self studying? Are you are you on my course? Because this is something which is open to um, my own students as well. It's just a little kind of extra thing. Um, or is it that you're a bit of a voyeur that you're here tonight uh, out of curiosity and that actually you're not doing SBR in March? So there's a poll and I can see that about half of you have voted. Well done. Thank you very much. Um, but there's another proportion of you uh, which have yet to commit, but I'm just leaving it for uh, a moment and three, two, one, any more for any more? And we've got a pretty much a three way split. Um, what I'm seeing is that some of you are self studying. So using YouTube, 
using Open Tuition, yeah, following me on LinkedIn, using my podcasts. Fantastic. It's a way to do it. Some of you are with an existing tuition provider, but maybe you think the grass might be greener on the other side of the fence. Maybe uh, you're looking for something extra and, and certainly maybe I can help you there. And some of you are my existing students and welcome and thank you very much. Um, right. Two other quick polls uh, that I want to share with you. Um, and the second one is about the practice platform is about test reach. Have you never been on it? Have you registered a few times? And are you come or, or maybe you're comfortable with it because you've already passed an exam with it? I don't know. Yeah. And it's interesting. It's just interesting for me to know where as a group you're at. And I can see most of you have replied, but not everybody by any stretch of the imagination. So let me just give you five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. And uh, the enthusiastic student likes my poll. Fantastic. Great. So I'm picking up that nearly 20% of you, a fifth of you, have never been on the ACCA practice platform. Well, you're going to watch me go on it tonight. And I, I want you to promise me, those of you who've been honest enough, and it's an anonymous poll, the information's not going anywhere. I want you to promise me that you're going to go on it. Yeah, I mean, that's 50% of the people attending tonight either have never been on it or have been on it a few times. Okay. Now, we are still five weeks away from doing the actual SBR exam. So you've got to be very familiar and very comfortable with the ACCA practice platform. You really have. So that's a behavior change that, yeah, I want you to um, embrace. Yeah, that's a behavior change that I want you to embrace and I want you to um, take on board. Um, and let's have a look at uh, our third and our final poll. I was talking to one of my students, one of my ex-students uh, this afternoon, and she had a very, uh, she had a very strong view uh, about SBR. Do you find it interesting? Or do you find it overwhelming? And we're, we're running here at about 50-50. We're, you know, half of you seem to be, at the moment, the way the polling is goes, finding it interesting, which is great. And some of you are being honest enough to feel that it's a little bit overwhelming. And I can see, I'm just going to allow another minute. When I say minute, I mean 30 seconds. And the results that we've got going there is 50-50 is roughly, isn't it? Yeah. A small majority of you are finding interesting. And some of you are in that binary world, finding it overwhelming. And I think that the thing I would say, if you're finding it overwhelming, is try not to learn it all. Now, I know that may sound a bit odd, but what's really key is that you understand. Because if you understand the principles, you've got a better opportunity of being able to apply that. This is not a test of rote learning. It's a test of understanding and application. So, yes, there is a lot to learn, but it's a question of breaking it down, chunking it up and infusing, I think, a little bit of um, a little bit of common sense in there. So, yeah, that's a little bit of the introductory done. Um, and uh, I'm sorry if the poll disappeared there for some of you. I don't know why that was. So here we go. Here we go. Free resources that are out there. All right. Now, I do a podcast and I think there's over 30 episodes of the podcast on pensions, on revisions, on financial instruments, on deferred tax, on PPE. There's a couple of them where I've interviewed people and I've got um, their views. So if you haven't experienced podcasts or you haven't experienced my podcast, I would strongly recommend that you find it. 
maybe you listen to one a day. You know, there are 30 days, um, you know, in a month. We've got February coming up, uh, 28 days in Feb. Maybe you make a point of saying, right, they're 10 minutes long. Maybe you've got a car journey for 10 minutes. Maybe you do some exercise for 10 minutes and listen to the podcast. They're very, very easy to find. They're on Spotify. They're free. Or you just put into Google, Clendon, my name, SBR, the exam podcast. And trust me, you will find the link in order to do so. So it's it's definitely something I would recommend. It's definitely something that my students that have used them also recommend as well. <laughs> now, Instagram, if you if you want to hold up your camera, if you want to hold up your iPhone and you want to you want to use that little QR code, uh, that will get you uh, into my Instagram account and we can become friends, connections on Instagram. It doesn't really add a lot of heavy academic content, but I do a, I do motivational posts and fun posts and informative posts uh, as well. Obviously, it's not quite the same as LinkedIn. I'm assuming that we are connected on LinkedIn. And please, um, if we're not connected on LinkedIn, make that also a, a go-to. So find me on Instagram if that's your thing. Not everybody's on Instagram. Not everybody likes the visuals. That's not a problem. But if you are, there's a little QR code. It's going to disappear in a moment. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, or just find me on Instagram. Search my name. Now, before we get involved in me working a question live for you, I just want to have an opportunity of talking to you about my revision course. Um, some of you are self-studying and you're putting in a lot of time and effort into uh, trying to pass this exam. And you might want to back yourself with by putting a little bit of money in there as well to make your path smoother. All right. Now, my revision course is open, but it's about to close. In 24 hours time, I will no longer be taking further enrollments on my revision course. And the reason for that is I want to, you know, give those people who are on the course my best possible service. So think about whether you want to come on that revision course, because you've got a decision to make in the next 24 hours. I'll come back to that again in a moment. I did a poll the other day on LinkedIn, and uh, it was a cheeky poll. Um, for those doing exams in March, what's best? What's the best thing for them to do in February? All right, the month before the exam, cram more knowledge in, five percent. Do more questions, ninety percent. Party and rely on tips. Um, is clearly a fun kind of scenario. So the vast, vast majority of people out there, yeah, members, yeah, students, academics who follow me as well, they know the thing that you've got to do between now and the exam, your aim and your mission statement for February is to do questions. Because that's what you're going to have to do in the exam answering questions. That's what we're going to be doing tonight. Your brain is like a sponge and you've got to cram knowledge in, yes, but but you're, you're going to go into a fight and the person that wins the fight is not necessarily the one with the biggest muscles. You've got to know how to use those muscles. You've got to know how to fight. You've got to know how to, you've got to have the craft. So I have seen people fail this exam who are very, very knowledgeable. But what they have lacked is the ability to apply that knowledge. When I talk to students, when I listen to students who have failed, it's I wish I had started doing questions earlier. I wish I had done the mocks. That's their regret because they realize in the exam they didn't have the speed of download. It's not about how much you know. It's how much you can apply, how much you can get out. Passing this exam is not a, a feat of consumption. 
it's 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 about it's about your output. It's about your output. So that's 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 the poll there. So some general advice here, some general advice here about revising. It is about past exam questions. Yeah. It is about not only doing those past exam questions, but getting them marked, getting feedback, having the opportunity to reflect. And if you're signed up already with an ALP, use the marking services. If you're signed up with BPP, if you're signed up with Kaplan, make sure that you take advantage of the support that the, you've paid for and make sure that when you get your script back, that it's not just covered in ticks and crosses, that it's got real feedback that is valuable to you, because that's what you would have been paying for. That's what you should be expecting to get. I quite like the idea of reading. So there's a little bit of reading that you can do, listening that you can do. It's about variety. The mainstay of revision is doing past exam questions and doing them, in my view, on the ACCA practice platform. I know some other tuition providers have their own mimic mimicking system, but end of the day, you are doing the exam, whether you like it or not, on CBE as a computer-based exam, and you're doing it on the ACCA practice platform. So I want you to feel England are playing Scotland on Saturday. Yeah, rugby union. And they're playing at Murrayfield. They're playing in Scotland. So England, my team, are playing away. And we're not favourites to win. If anything, Scotland are favourites to win. Why? Partly because of Finn Russell, but partly because they're playing at home. And when you play at home, you feel at ease. You know the changing rooms. You know the way the wind blows. You've got the crowd behind you. And the idea is I want you to think of the ACCA practice platform as your home. Yeah, I want you to think of the ACCA practice platform as your home. So that when you get to the exam, you know how the buttons work. You've logged on it before. You're familiar with it. That's why the ACCA practice platform, because statistically teams who play at home are more likely to win. Statistically, students who do exams on the ACCA practice platform are more likely to pass. Part of revision is about revising, going over what you know already. It's about mix and matching it. And ideally, you have a study buddy. Ideally, you are in contact with other students who are going through the same experience, which is why I have a WhatsApp study group on my courses. So this is a quick sales pitch. This is a two minute sales pitch about my online revision course. I could spend a long time talking about this. And if you wanna talk about this on a one-to-one -one basis, all you have to do is reach out to me. But on my revision course, I get you to do exam questions and other questions as well, yeah? You get to see not only you get to see my answers, I structure the answers in a way which I think are student friendly, I think are logical. And sometimes the examiner's answers are too complicated, too long, too detailed, not understandable. And so reviewing the examiner's answers isn't always as useful as it might be. I aspire to write an answer that is useful to review. And I debrief. So what you're seeing today is me live working a question and you can effectively see video after video after video after video after video after video of me doing this yeah not only with past exam questions but with other questions as well and there's various other things on that revision course there's revision notes whatever and i get you to do two mock exams if you enroll on my revision course if you're already enrolled on my revision course or platinum course end of tuition mock been and gone, you've got a revision mock, and you've got the final mock. So come on my revision course and you get two mock exams on the ACCA practice platform that will be marked, will be fed back to you, and you won't have seen them before. They'll be fresh. Yeah? And let's see if we can have a little peek 
under the window. This is only going to be a minute. Um, but let's have a, a little peek behind the screen, behind the uh, platform. So here we are. So some of you who are students of mine will recognize where we are here. But we're on the uh, on the portal and you can see there's various units. And it's a kind of a linear approach. So there's an introduction to what's going on and instructions and various dates. And the first content really is about making sure you know about group accounts. So there's some quick little videos to watch. There's some quizzes, yeah? Some online quizzes for you to do, revision notes, yeah? So to make sure you know all those key formula, yeah, how to calculate goodwill, so on and so forth. And it's all included here, yeah, in the course. Um, we get you to do questions, and these are then debriefed. So, you know, here we've got, um, here we've got a, a question of Hummings, and there's me, you know, working that question. And I'm working goodwill it through. approach it. Now we're specifically told on the practice platform, yeah, and it's a bit painful to sort of watch them all there. But it's you know, there's revision material on standards, making sure that you're up to speed on your deferred tax and financial assets. There's quizzes there, cash flow. I mean, cash flow came up last time, or for some people, didn't come up for everyone because there's more than one exam, and then there's just exam after exam after exam which are you know debriefed for you with my answers yeah and 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 some of these exams are fresh questions that you won't have seen um maybe you're if you're doing a reset proportion of people do reset but i've got these extra questions that i've written so they're sort of more the style because you go back to the old p2 questions and they're all a bit stiff and a bit too technical there's material for UK students, and then there's another little portal where I take you through current issues and the final mock. So that's basically um, my revision course. And, uh, you know, if anyone is interested uh, in that, then um, please reach out to me. But that is effectively uh, the end of what I want to do in terms of um selling and advertising and, and kind of promoting my uh, courses there let's go back to where we were and um, where we were was talking about my courses and one last little thing uh, one last little thing is to talk about the fact that the revision course is uh, just over 500 pounds to enroll on but if that is too much for your budget and you're looking for something um, a little bit cheaper, then I do a mock exam. Um, and I just like someone else to talk about this mock exam. For a moment. I think the thing that stood out to me the most or that was the most useful for me was the mock exam. So we got to write a mock exam in the same platform as the real exam on the time conditions and after the exam we got very detailed personal feedback and that was very useful for me because it really shows you the areas you struggle with your weakness areas and then obviously if you know your weakness areas then you can improve on those areas i decided to set the mock exam um and it was um, really really good because it was on an actual ACCA practice platform and um, uh, the questions even the layout and everything was very very similar to the actual exam so that helped me a lot because when I sat uh, the mock exam I sat under the exam conditions so it was a good test for myself uh, and of course then Tom's feedback uh, was I think absolutely amazing and I think that's what's helped me the most because I found out where I went wrong um, I found out where I was right um, and where I could get uh, more marks you know those last minute easy marks that you can get 
Right. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your patience. Um, and thank you for your financial contribution uh, to Macmillan. Um, what I am going to do now is to move into the uh, next stage of the session, which is to take you through a question. But before I do that, let me just pause for a second. Let me just pause for a second and um, make sure there isn't anything on the chat that's uh, that you want to that you want to talk about. So I'm about to look into a past exam question. Are there any queries on anything I've said so far um, in this regard? Are we still there? If you'd like me to move on to the uh, to do the um, debrief of the question, can you just put a Y in the chat, please? Hey, Caroline, you want me to move on? Abby, Tommy, you want me to move on? And move on, I will. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Ivy. Thank you, Gary. Yeah. Good, good, good. OK. All right. So I'm going to play a bit of a game here. Um, you'll see the game that I'm about to play. Um, I'm sharing my screen. And the screen I'm going to share is a test for each screen. And here I am on test reach. You might be able to see the um, address. Yeah, cbept.accaglobal.com. And because FME has their own little area, um, I'm able to use, you can see that in the, in, in, in the logo there. So the question I've chosen to work tonight is an ethics question. It's a past examination question. It's from the September, December exam. And we navigate through. So, oh, sugar. I don't know if you've done sugar. Sugar is a horrible question. Um, serious uh, cash flow number crunching question. Well, it's horrible in, in if you want to get it right. There's lots of marks available and some fairly easy marks available in it as well. Um, but it's one that is one that is tricky. Right. OK. What's the time? What's the time? The time is 1829. I'm going to call that half past. OK, so it's half past six. And this is a question and it, the requirement of the question is for 20 marks. Now, I don't propose to do the whole requirement of the question. Calibre operates in the property sector. This is question two. So it's going to be on ethics. New technology, blockchain, following exhibits. There's one about apartment blocks. There's one about the chief accountant. And there's one about distributed ledger technology, or whatever that is. And the first thing I've done is to very quickly scan read that information. I'm opening up the requirements of the question. And actually, I don't even read the requirements of the question. Yeah. Um, what I want to do with the requirements of the question is to uh, copy them. So I go control C. I then close this off. I then open up my word response area and then I dump the requirements of the question. So it means I can always see them. All right. Um, now I've lost the formatting. So I then have to invest in uh, invest a few moments in the formatting. Now there's a part A for five marks about revenue. Yeah, so there's a there's a little bit about revenue and there's a little bit about borrowing costs, five marks, eight minutes, something like that. And then there's a little bit about providing the accounting entries. So you could do that in the form of journals or plus minuses. And it's three marks and you haven't got your Excel. You haven't got your spreadsheet. So we're going to have to do it in the word function. But actually tonight, what I want to look at tonight really is the part C of the question, uh, which is the ethics part. And what I've got going on here for me is 10 marks for uh, discussing the way in which the chief accountant should have acted to ensure he maintained ethical standards 
in dealing with exhibit two and exhibit three. Now you're sort of going to have to trust me and trust yourself, but these exhibits and requirements are pretty self self standing. And we've also got two professional marks, and we'll talk about that uh, in a while. But if we've got ten marks, my very crude indication is that we've got 18 minutes. Now, actually, we've got a bit longer than that because that's based on three hours rather than three hours 15. And we've also got two professional marks. So I reckon I should be finishing this question at about 10 to 7. I reckon I'm going to be providing an answer in about 20 minutes. And you can see the quality and the length and the logic and how I've put that together in that time. Now, we've got to worry about exhibit two and we've got to worry about exhibit three. So I'm kind of assuming there's probably five marks tied up in exhibit two and five marks tied up in exhibit three. That's my that's my logic. Yeah. And you can see what I'm trying to do here is to create some sort of structure. So let's first of all do one thing at a time and have a look at uh, exhibit number two and see what exhibit number two says. Discuss the way in which the chief accountant should have acted to ensure he maintained ethical standards described in Exhibit 2. The chief accountant doesn't hold a permanent employment, is applied for a position on a permanent basis and is going to be interviewed in the near future. Everything you're told is relevant. So the chief accountant is wanting a job, is working there, uh, temp to perm. Now, Badini is a customer of Calibra um, and wants to take advantage of a reduced price for an apartment block, but was having problems with the cash flow. The chief accountant, this is the person we're worried about their ethics, has therefore allowed them to pay the 8.5 million and to delay payment. Yeah, and to delay payment for one month after the year end for one month after the contract. Now, I'm not looking at the chat. I'm not looking at the chat. Someone's put something on the chat, but I'm not looking at it. I'm doing one thing at a time. In return, in return. So you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. In return, they've agreed to provide a good employment reference. So I'm beginning to think here about ethics. The chief accountant was afraid he might lose Badini as a customer, and that would damage the business. But equally, yeah, equally, um, there is a reference to uh, the, 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 the referee. So look, the reference. So we've read the requirement of the question. And in reading the requirement of the question, the thing that strikes me is it's not about confidentiality. It's about it's not about competence. It, the, the issue that strikes me is objectivity, that the chief accountant is in a dilemma um, because ha, I, I want to start writing. Yeah. So the chief accountant, the chief accountant, and let's not bother writing chief accountant again. Let's just simply use here. The chief accountant has an ethical dilemma. Yeah, has an ethical dilemma. Yeah, um, in his dealings with Bondini's, he's got two hats on in his dealings with Bondini. However you spell Bondini doesn't really matter. Yeah, um, he is a professional and needs to act. He is a professional and needs to act ethically. So we're setting the scene a little bit. Now, in order to be ethical, he's got to be independent and he's got to do things for the right reason. Yeah. To be ethical, the chief accountant needs to be objective, needs to be objective in his dealings, needs to be objective in his dealings and make commercial decisions and make commercial decisions in the best interest of his employer, in the best interest of Calibra and not 
simply for his own self-interest. Yeah, not simply for his own self-interest. If, if he has extended credit, if he has extended credit to Badini in order to curry favour, slightly slang, but I think it's okay, in order to curry favour and get that good reference, this is clearly unethical. It is lacking in integrity. Right, now that's a little bit of an adrenaline rush. That's a little bit um, stating the fact that I think is a, a crook, stating the fact that I think he's acting unethically. But I don't think that's enough for five marks. And so I kind of pause for breath. Now, I do like to see the good in people. So if he's made, he could be acting ethically if he's made the decision to give them that extended credit period because it's in their best interest, because it's in the company's best interest. If that's his motivation, it could be it could be. That's why it's a dilemma. That's why it's not a clear cut situation. I think I want to get a professional mark here. And to do that, you link things to. Uh, the principles which we have done. But also, I think we need to um, link it to an action point. If you were, if you were um, the chief accountant here, what action would you take? It, it's not a hundred percent explicit in the requirement because you're asked to discuss the way he should have acted. I think, therefore, we need to conclude with some kind of recommendation. What would you do in that situation? I know what I would do. I'd get a second opinion. I would tell my boss, look, these people might give me a reference. They're also asking for an extended period of credit. I think we should give it to them, but I want you to sign it off. I want you to know. So I think there is, uh, I think there is an action point here. Yeah, um, there is a chance that the chief accountant has acted ethically if the motivation to give the credit, to give the extended credit, was to keep the customer keep the customer on board. Chief accountant should discuss this with the board, declare the self-interest and to get the uh, extended credit agreed by another colleague. Yeah? So we're covering ourselves. Now, I've already spent 10 minutes on this. We've got a 20 minute budget. So I've, if you like, I'm exhausting myself. What you've noticed that I've tried to do is break down the answer. So we've been talking about exhibit two for five marks, and I've tried to give it some structure where we've used many little headings. So we talked about objectivity. It's one way of organizing it. We talked about integrity. That's another way of organizing it. And then we've tried to follow it up with some action points. All right. And now we're going to talk about Exhibit 3. When I say talk about Exhibit 3, I mean read Exhibit 3. We've got to be brutal in the exam. We've got to work at this pace in the exam. Yeah, we've got to trust the system, having done past exam questions that separate exhibits are. And what are we being asked to do? D. 
discuss the way in which the chief accountant should have acted to ensure he maintained ethical standards. Yeah, so we're pointing out where he's broken. Calibra has used distributed ledger, blockchain, yeah, and all those fancy words, I don't really understand what they mean. These transactions are only visible to authorized parties. The chief accountant publicly supports this technology and is to manage the system. So the chief accountant publicly supports this technology and is going to be the man in charge. <coughs> However, he's two-faced. He has private concerns. Private concerns. He thinks, actually, it's not reliable. Yeah, and there's a potential violation of local regulations. So he has private concerns. <coughs> Excuse me. The directors want to increase the number of transactions using this. The chief accountant has a very basic knowledge. The chief accountant has a very basic knowledge. <coughs> And he has assured that he can facilitate this transition. It's been approved by the board. The board have approved it, despite the chief accountant's private... Well, if they're private reservations, he hasn't told the board. So the board haven't been warned. The chief accountant has only recently qualified. Yeah, the chief accountant has only recently qualified and wishes to get a job, doesn't want to rock the boat. What ethical principle springs to your mind? What ethical principle here? Well, you've got a chief accountant. I mean, I, th I, I th there's two things exploding in my head. He's a bullshitter. He's saying he can do something that he's got a very basic knowledge of, that's one thing. And I think I'm not gonna use the word bullshitter in my answer, um, but competence and integrity, Joseph, you are spot on. So one issue that occurs to me, that occurs to us is competence. There are concerns there are concerns that the newly qualified chief accountant is not up to the job of using the new technology. He is, he has a very basic knowledge. In order to be ethical, accountants need to be competent in taking on, need to be competent in taking on the roles and responsibilities. Now, I mean, everybody has to learn. Everybody has to do things in 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 one in one sense. But I, I, I also want to talk about integrity. I can come back and edit this answer. I want to talk about integrity because basically, um, the uh, charge the uh, chief accountant has lied. Is lied is a bit of too too strong a word. Yeah, has not. Yeah, told the board of his concerns. Has uh, not told the board of his concerns about the technology. This is a serious matter because this could result. And what was it? Um, was something about uh, violation of local regulation. That's against the law um, because this could result in a breach of the law.
this could mean fines and a damage to the reputation of the business. So the stakes are high, the stakes are high and there's areas of competence and integrity. Now, again, for me, if I want to uh, follow this through, then I think we want to be talking about action. So what should the chartered account, what should the chief accountant have done? Well, if the chief accountant was honest and said, I've got some experience, but I need a bit more, maybe they go on a training course. Yeah. So the chief accountant should acknowledge and admit the limitations of his knowledge to the board training may be an answer getting consultants in may be an answer but keeping things secret because you want to get the job is not is not the right ethical thing to do getting consultants in may be the answer and this business about um doubts again i think that should be acknowledged yeah so the chief accountant should also inform the board about his concerns to fail to to fail to disclose them to fail to disclose them worried that the bringer of bad news is blamed is unethical is unethical and i've taken 20 minutes i've taken 20 minutes to construct this answer all right now i am not necessarily claiming and and actually i've done it because i've done it in 20 minutes actually you've still got a few minutes left because the definition of 20 minutes is based around 10 marks being 18 minutes and actually it was 12 marks now would i get 12 out of 12 for this answer i don't know it, I, I can't be objective because i've written the answer but i know that it's 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 i know that it's achievable within the time allowed and when you look at the examiner's answer the examiner's answer is not wrong of course it's not wrong but I just don't think that it's structured in a way and is achievable for you. And I think this is achievable for you because I think we have answered the question and I think we're picking up our professional marks. We've 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 we've, we've talked about the, the key issues that arise. Of course, it could be better. Of course, the spelling, but it's not a test of spelling, not a test of spelling, not a test of spelling. So, yeah, I mean, let me now have a look at some of the, yeah, you're trying to make the employment permanent. There's a self-interest threat too. Absolutely, Kevin. I agree with that. You can make that point and you would get marked for it. There is no one answer to this question. And, you know, if I were to debrief this question again, I could specifically make that point clearer, Kevin. Yeah. And so don't think that you've got to go away and exactly copy the points that I've made here, it's the gist, it's the spirit. The words are always going to be, the words are always going to be different. So Kevin, that's a very valid point. Joseph, 
says discuss about the violations to the board to see if they will address close if not seek the consultation about the next yeah you know absolutely absolutely so i'm just pausing here for a minute because this is the way the practice platform works you know and this is the approach that i would take to answering a question on ethics and i did have a number of you contact me and say actually ethics is something i want to have a little bit of a practice on you never ever ever get marks for saying there are five ethical pillars and the ethical pillars are objectivity professional behavior professional you know you don't get marks for regurgitating the facts it's all about the application it's all about the application and this part a um you know was about the apartment blocks and so was answered by being able to look at exhibit one the the requirement of the question and the exhibits are very standalone yeah and you have to you have to trust that you have to get used to that by doing the questions and understanding how that is working so there you go there's my answer yeah there's my answer tonight it's something i've created tonight and you know what i haven't done what i haven't done is used a lot of the um and if i if i wanted to print the answer if i wanted to save the answer yeah i would be able to you know uh save that answer by saving it as a pdf and saving it in my system if i wanted to i'm not going to save it. It, it 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 sort of means nothing to me as such uh it's not going to go anywhere um so i'm not going to bother to save it but you know that's that's how the system works um you've got a calculator if you need a calculator and obviously in this example we didn't need a calculator and to be honest most of the marks are written very few marks are um for numbers um and you've got a spreadsheet if you want to use the spreadsheet scratch pad i never use yeah there wouldn't be any point in planning an answer in the scratch pad because the examiner doesn't see the answer the examiner doesn't see the scratch pad at all so it's not something that's submitted so i'm pausing here for a moment um are there any uh, sort of comments or observations i guess some of you would have done that question and seen the examiner's answer um is that okay yeah it's, it's it, the business of copy cutting and paste the requirement dumping it into the word response area resizing these windows yeah having having things side by side is is a key and being able to maneuver these things around is a key um key part of yeah of, of you've got to be able to do this second nature it's about learning to drive you know when i learned to drive the radio wasn't on when i learned to drive i didn't want to go in the rain when i learned to drive i didn't want to go in the dark i wanted to keep things as simple as possible as simple as possible so joseph says on exam strategy how does get those easy marks by saying the obvious things by saying the obvious things by breaking down by realizing that it's a five mark exercise uh, it's not a 10 mark exercise it's two five mark exercises because this is exhibit two, two and exhibit three and by identifying uh joseph that that it's not it's not one trick there's more than one trick there's more than one answer the chief accountant has a conflict of interest self-interest and they've got a you've got to bring in objectivity and integrity and an action so it's about giving and going again yeah uh feng shai says do we need to worry about the spelling of our answers and clearly the answer to that question is no this is not a test of spelling uh sylvia says regarding the exhibits do they tend to be shorter than the sbl ones yes they do the sbl ones are a monster that's why you've got four hours yeah for sbl so the exhibits tend to be shorter sylvia go into the platform find that out for yourself i'm speaking the truth but you also need to own that truth yeah for yourself So I'm coming off the um 
practice platform um, and I'm going to share um, share my screen again and just give you something slightly different to look at uh, and what I'm getting you to look at there is uh, a Q and A. So please, yeah, please. Um, do we need to address the board or the audience when there are no professional marks? There isn't a need to create a formal report in any way, shape or form. Um, so just get on straight with the answer. So there isn't a need to structure. I know in SBL, there's a format that you will need to follow, but in S SBR, there are no sort of presentation or format or structure marks in that regard. Uh, how many non number crunching marks will be available? Maybe 90%? Maybe 90 percent. Uh, the vast majority of marks are for words. Um, are for words. Uh, and there will be a few marks in question one. There's a few marks for the narrative, a few marks for the numbers. Um, and there may be in other parts of the question, but work on the idea that 85 to 90 percent of the marks are for words and explanation. Kevin, uh, so it's OK to discuss, evaluate, no need to address. That's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, nice to uh, nice to see you, Amateo. Thank you for joining. Um, I was in Nigeria just before lockdown, went to Lagos with ACCA, had some lovely jollof rice, but that's another story. Uh, so, yeah, good luck in Nigeria. Right. So. Any questions? Any questions? Regarding the mock course, is the kind of deadline to register? The sooner you register, by registering on the mock course, you get put on the WhatsApp group, so you get an immediate benefit. The course opens up in 10 days or so, and there's some material on there to do with current issues and UK gap, one or two other little things. I want to talk about it being a mock course so that your expectations are exceeded, but it's in your best interest to sign up ASAP that mock course does close a week or so before um, or when it gets full. So please, if you are thinking about doing that mock course, I think it's £147, sign up sooner rather than later because you benefit and I get you onboarded and registered with the ACCA system and you, 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 you prevent the risk of moving out. Uh, Kevin asks when, whether we whether we need to specifically mention the revaluation reserve, investment surplus and translation reserve, or if we just mention other components of equity. Other components of equity is fine, Kevin. It's an embracing term that covers all of those things. So other components of equity is the language of the standard. Usman says, um, What's coming up in the exam, Usman says, in other words. Uh, fair enough. Um, work on your weaknesses, Usman. Work on your weaknesses. Uh, I don't know what's going to be tested. Well, I do. Groups are going to be tested, but that's massive. Ethics are going to be tested, but that's applied. Um, so current issues are going to be tested, but there's quite a few of those. So it is about having a breadth of knowledge, I think is more important than the depth of knowledge. And it's also important that you practice questions rather than just try and learn and learn and learn and learn and learn and learn. It's about application, application, application. If you're in the spreadsheet, yeah, you don't need bold, just, uh, just use the spreadsheet. In the normal way. Where is the best place to find details of current issues, Edward says? Well, one way is listen to my podcast. Because if you listen to my podcast, I have got a podcast there about sustainability um, uh, and about other current issues, knocking around the effect of COVID, that kind of thing. Um, but also, if you come on my any of my courses, there is a specific section on 
current issues, but I would say that, wouldn't I? So my podcast is a free and simple resource. Follow me on LinkedIn and look at my um, feed on LinkedIn and my past and you'll find some information articles there I've written on current issues. Joseph, I agree with you. Financial instruments is a beast. Um, knowing your weaknesses and working on them is a good thing, Osman. Yeah. Recycling means having an impact. Uh, yes, Kevin, you're right. Uh, and that's a whole lecture in its own right. So I'm not going to get too involved in that. And if there's an accumulated translation of 100, then you'll clear out the you'll clear out the um, reserve by debiting the reserve, assuming it's a credit reserve, debit the reserve and credit P&L end of. So that's the only entry that you'll make. So um, if you're recycling, then the only entry you make will be to debit other components of equity to clear it out and credit P&L. All right. The fact that it's credited to P&L means that it will then flow through flow through to OCI and retained earnings. <coughs> Excuse me. So I wrote quite a long article on um, recycling to do with, I think it was called Concepts of Profit, and that has been published by the ACCA on the ACCA website, Kevin. So please make sure you have a look at that article. Um, and that also includes some journal entries on there. Uh, hedge accounting is very tough. Um, Vivana, absolutely, it is tough. I've done a podcast on it. And if you look at my, um, uh, if you look at PQ magazine, there's an article in there as well. So, yeah, hedge accounting is tough. You're not an, the only one to find on that. Tommy says, do you get extra marks for explaining a question with the ethics and professional skills module? Yes. Yes. I mean, you know, what you've learned um, in reality, what you've learnt in your previous studies, you can synthesise and you can bring in. Yeah, you've got to always make sure you answer the question. You may say something which is perfectly correct, technically fine, but if it's not answering the question that has been set, then the marker can't give you marks for it. So don't be frightened of using a bit of common sense, a bit of SBL, a bit of whatever in in bringing yourself to this uh, ethics question, yeah, to this opinion. You're being asked your opinion. So use your uh, armory of skills and knowledge. Yeah. Ah, oh, Abby, thank you. Thank you for saying thank you. Usman, thank you for saying thank you, because it's a win-win situation. I get to maybe sell something. Uh, I get to help people, I hope, and we certainly raise some money for charity. So um, that's a, a win-win-win, and I'm about to go downstairs and have my tea. Uh, how much should we write for each mark? Well, I think what you were seeing me do was trying to create an answer, which I felt was worth a mark for each paragraph. You saw me write mini paragraphs. Sometimes they were one sentence, sometimes they were two sentences, and it was structured. And you saw me write an answer within the time allowed. Now, if you're quicker at typing, if you're quicker at speed reading than me, well done. Fantastic. But that's the answer that I can produce within the time allowed. And I genuinely believe out of 12, that would have got me 10. That would have got me nine. That would have got me 11. You know, and and that's the length and quality of the answer that I can produce under time pressure, being watched. Maybe I could be a little bit quicker if I didn't have to talk and I was just head down. But to be honest, I've seen that question before. I wasn't working it cold, cold. So it's, it's kind of, you know, a balance. If you do calculations in the spreadsheet, just say, yeah, uh, just reference it in the main body of the answer. But uh, uh, you can also do calculations in the um, word processing response area as well. So AKM, I hope that answered your question. Ivy, thank you for the thank you. And I've run over by five minutes, but that's OK. It's OK. It's not OK in the exam to run over by five minutes um, because you've got to be brutal and you've got to move on. Caroline, thank you for your thank yous. 
Thank you, yeah, Edward. Thank you very much. Excellent. One last question from anybody, Lily. Thank you and goodbye, Anita. Yeah, Vanessa. Excellent. Good night. Good luck, everybody. If I can be of any help, yeah. If you want to reach out to me, if you want to have uh, reach out to me, then you know, contact me through LinkedIn. Contact me through, yeah, my WhatsApp number is relatively publicly available, you know. Um, so, yeah, good luck. Take care.